research. So hey everyone, it's Emma, Emma D from the Marketing Success Summit back again today. And today I have the absolutely wonderful Michelle Rohr. I'd really like you to, to welcome you, Michelle. Thank you, thank you for having me. Not at all. I'm really delighted to have you here. Um, I've um, personally done um, some of your um, trainings on the Female Entrepreneur Association. So just for the last two years alone, I've really seen a meteoric rise to success with Michelle. And firstly, I'd like to congratulate you. I mean, you've just been doing an amazing job on Pinterest, um, you know, on a variety of different areas that you just seem to be popping up all the time. So congratulations on your success for the last couple of years. You're amazing. Thank you. Just putting one foot in front of the other. <laughs> like us all, I guess. <laughs> so just to give people a bit of a background, um, Michelle, you know, I think just from, you know, you sent me on some material there, you know, kind of on your background and just in terms of, you know, blogging, printables. So if anybody wants to go and look at you on Pinterest, they can see a lot of your printables and a lot of the content that you've created. Um, you love traveling, Paris, um, old fashioned movies, your Catholic faith is very important. Um, it would be very important here in Ireland typically as well. Um, you know, and you're taking, what I like actually about what you're saying is you, you take a hundred percent responsibility for your life. And I think that's actually really wonderful. Um, the other thing just obviously in terms of today is Michelle is an absolutely outstanding graphics teacher for DIY entrepreneurs. So today, um, she's going to show us all how to create, um, really good looking social media posts that you can use, be it on Pinterest, be it on your Facebook, maybe on Twitter or depending on the social media platform that you would use. So what I'm going to do is without further ado, hand you back to Michelle and uh, I'll let her weave her magic over to you, Michelle. And thank you again so much. Thank you, Emma. So to start out this little teaching, I just want to give a few tips on creating your own graphics and some encouragement because a lot of the time we think that if we do it ourselves, it's not going to look that good. And if, if you're starting from complete scratch, it probably wouldn't look good. But I've learned a few tips that have helped me realize that by keeping things simple and by having a few tools in your toolbox, you can, you can really make beautiful branded graphics with no previous experience. And uh, um, the thing that I'm really excited about is you can do it all with a program called pickmonkey.com and it is a free program, but to get some of the extra features, it's like I think $5 a month. So I'll be using this program to teach you how to do, uh, how to create amazing graphics for your business. Um, and one of the things I want to focus on is having templates so that when you create graphics, graphics, it's not taking up all of your time because I know if you're in business, you do not need to be spending your whole day in front of the computer designing graphics. It's just a part of your business, but it's something that needs to be as quick and easy as possible. So I'm really excited to share how to do that. Um, with this particular lesson today, we're going to focus on Pinterest because you know there's tons of different types of graphics you can make for Facebook and Instagram and uh, all these different platforms but the tools that I will the tools and techniques that I'll be teaching you in Pinterest you can apply to all the other social media sizes but I want to focus on Pinterest because I believe that if you're an entrepreneur these you should be on Pinterest uh, because there's a lot of power there Pinterest is the second biggest source of traffic to websites uh, in terms of social media platforms. So I want to show you how to create graphics for Pinterest so that you can get on there and uh, tap into that leverage and power that is Pinterest. So we're going to go uh, over to Pinterest.com and can you see my screen okay, Emma? Yeah, it looks perfect, thank you. All right, so, if and Emma, are you on Pinterest? Yes, yeah. I, I love Pinterest. It's my um, go-to place to <laughs> see what I really love to do in my life. <laughs> Me too. And Pinterest is a visual search engine. So you get to tap into uh, a whole audience of people that are looking for things to improve their lives. So they are actively looking for solutions and that means that they are more ready to spend money than if they were just browsing on Facebook and updating their status. So I want to point out how to create a graphic for Pinterest that will drive tons of traffic 
to your website. And I'm going to do that by pointing out um, what you should look for when you are researching how you want your graphics to look. So feel free to get inspiration from what is working for other people, but still create your own look. Don't copy anybody, but still like be inspired by what works. So if you're looking at Pinterest and you look at a graphic like this, you will see the number of repins that that particular graphic has had. So I'm pointing down here to 3.4K, so that means that this particular graphic has been repinned 3,000 and 3,400 times, basically. And there is a very simple formula for achieving that level of uh, success, that level of repins, because every time a pin is repinned, that person's followers see that graphic, and, and when they repin it, those, those people have their followers see the graphic, so there's this viral compound effect magic that's happening. And the way to have that happen for you is actually very simple. So first tip is you want a graphic that is longer, taller than it is wide, because a tall graphic takes up more of the screen when people are scrolling through Pinterest, okay? And the other tip is you want it to have a very eye-catching title, like 20 plus QC tools to help you manage social media like a pro. So if you are looking to manage social media like a pro, you are in the market for wanting to check out this uh, blog post. This graphic represents a blog post that it's linked to. And you're probably wondering, what are those 20 plus juicy tools? You know, I want to go check it out. And so you will click on this and it will go to that person's website and that blog post and you can, you know, see what they have to offer, maybe you'll end up buying a course, follow them on Facebook, and just become part of their following, which is what we're all trying to do for ourselves. And you can also save it to your board to, to, uh, to read later or just to have on hand. And the cool thing about Pinterest is when you save something, when somebody saves something, a pin for themselves, it's like they're sharing it at the same time. So if I save this to my be a better blogger board on Pinterest that all my followers, my thousands of followers that follow my blog, my particular board, that particular board will see this pin pop up on their, their uh, news feed. So we want to tap into that. So number one is you want your graphic, your template to be long or tall and you want to have a headline that is eye catching and makes them want to click on it to find out what are those 20 tips? Um, and the other uh, cool, good thing that I see this person doing is they have their website on the graphic itself. And that's helpful because sometimes graphics on Pinterest, the links can get locked. Like if someone takes your graphic and makes it link to something else, that doesn't happen often, but it could happen. Like someone could simply save your image and make it link to something else. To save the integrity of your brand and your, your business, your links, you put, the, you put the website URL on the graphics. So make sure you do that so that people are less likely to just steal your image for their own purposes. Okay, so let us go into how we can do this for ourselves. So coming over to PicMonkey, uh, PicMonkey.com, uh, there are a couple of new features that PicMonkey added that makes it a lot easier to use than it was a couple months ago. So one of the things that we're going to focus on is the design uh, feature. So we're going to come down here and we're going to click on templates. And what that does is it will open up a whole library of of graphics that are already sized to be what we want them to be. So there are graphics here for Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. I'm going to scroll down to the, the graphic that is sized for Pinterest. All right. Or like you see, here's one for Facebook. Here's one for a Facebook banner. Um, wow, they added more. Okay, there it is. So this one is for Pinterest. I'm going to click on that, customize it. 
Because sometimes you, people are asking, oh, what's the size of a graphic for Facebook or what size should I use for Pinterest? So if you go in there, it's already sized for you. You can go ahead and get started with designing. So I'm going to get rid of this cover. So right now we have a blank uh, transparent template. And the other, the tip that I want you to remember when you are creating graphics is use a mood board. So if you have a website, a blog, uh, and it's already been designed, there are certain colors and fonts that are a part of your brand. And you want to stick to that and, and, and uh, in, across all of your social media. So you want to use those colors and fonts when you're making graphics for Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. So that way when people go from your graphic on Facebook or Pinterest or whatever to, to your blog or your website, it's, just, it's the same feeling, it's the same experience. And using, the other reason why it's really good to use your mood board is because it keeps, it just makes it easier for your stuff to look good instead of coming up from complete scratch every time. So the time that it takes to put a mood board together is worth it. And if you don't have one, do that first before you start creating graphics and templates because if you, if you don't have a mood board to work on, chances are the stuff you create is not going to really work for your brand. It'll kind of end up working against you. So do that first. And the, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me point out what a mood board is really quick. So I'm going to go to Pinterest and I'm going to type in mood board. And that brings up a whole bunch of different examples of mood boards. So this is a good example of a mood board. We have uh, a set of colors here and then some images that communicate a certain type of feeling or mood. And you can use that, or like pretend this is your mood board. You would use these colors, oops, I don't want to open up that website. You would use these colors to design your, your, uh, your graphics. So in my example, I'm just going to pull out my mood board from my files. And I put this together myself. I had a professional designer help me with my website. Uh, she designed my whole blog. It only cost me a couple hundred dollars. Like I said, I, I'm a graphic designer, but I'm not a professional graphic designer. And in this area, I was like, I just want someone to do this part for me, and I'll do all the rest. So once he created that look and feel for my blog, I was then able to go in and get the colors and the fonts to then go forward with creating my own graphics and content. All right, here's my mood board. All right, and I've had this mood board for like a couple years already. <laughs> I keep using it. Um, so we are going to create a viral Pinterest graphic using a mood board. And the first thing that I would do when I'm doing a Pinterest graphic is I will get a stock photo, whether it's a photo that I've taken myself or something from like unsplash.com, I would use a, a, um, a stock photo to help add that extra level of intrigue to the photo because Pinterest is very much about lifestyle. So if you have photo photography or using photography that communicates a certain lifestyle, people it'll catch people's eye more because they're on Pinterest to improve their lifestyle. Um, so that makes your image more relatable to people that are scrolling through. So I'm going to grab one of my photos here. All right. I'm going to expand this. All right. Bring my mood board to the front. And now to use these colors, I'm going to come down here. So right now we have, if you look to the left of the screen, you have all these little features and buttons. I'm not gonna go through every single feature. Uh, 
because personally, I don't even use every single feature. I use like a very, very small percent of the tools that are offered in PicMonkey to do everything I do for myself and my clients, and I'm gonna show you the ones that I use the most. So right now I'm in the overlays uh, feature, and I'm gonna scroll down a little bit to the geometric feature. And that opens up all these different shapes, and I'll grab the rectangle shape, and I will make this rectangle, um, trying to grab, there we go. I will make this rectangle reflect the color that I want from my mood board. So by selecting it and then coming over here and clicking on that, then clicking on the dropper tool, I'm gonna hover it over the color I want. So this will pick up the color that you want it to pick, whatever color you hover it over. Or if you know the code of the color you wanna use, so like you see right here, I've written the or I've typed up the codes for the different colors. So like let's say you knew the code and you selected the, the overlay, you click on this little box here. This area with all the zeros is where you could just go ahead and type in the code. So if I wanted it to be my red color, I would type in ea 988 enter. There you go. So a handy thing to do would be if you make your mood board to go ahead and print it out and put it, tape it up on the wall next to your laptop so that you can always refer to it when you're creating stuff and just have the codes for the colors on it so you can just go ahead and type it in. All right, so I'm going to take this rectangle on the top here. And what I am doing is actually designing this graphic the way I, oh, you can hear the sirens. <laughs> I'm right next to the road. <laughs> They're coming for you, Michelle. <laughs> Um, I'm designing this the way that I designed my pins for my Pinterest and I've had pins that went viral pretty much like they've been pinned tens of thousands of times so you can see that what I'm doing is very very simple but it is a formula for success on Pinterest so I'm going to get rid of this mood board now and I can bring this color down here okay so the next thing I'll do is I'll come to the text feature. I'll click add text. And I can put something like uh, 10 ways using a life binder has improved my life. Okay, so using words or terms like 10 ways or five things or six tips, it makes people wonder, what are the 10 ways? What are the five things? What are the six tips? So you, uh, that's a secret, Pinterest secret. Um, so right now under the text feature, we have two folders basically, the hours folder and the yours folder. Hours, this is all of the fonts that PicMonkey has to offer, and under the Yours tab are all the fonts that you have downloaded on your own computer. So I typically go to the Yours tab because I've purchased fonts throughout the years and have just had it downloaded on my computer and it will pop up on PicMonkey. So I'm going to use True North. There we go. And you can Bring the size down by sliding this down here. Bring this up here. You could experiment with making it white, or I think I want it to be gray. The other thing I want to try out doing is Whenever I make a graphic, I'm always playing around with the look of it until I feel like it is okay. Like that's my secret to creating beautiful graphics is I keep working at it and working at it and working at it until I feel like, okay, I'm happy with this. And sometimes I could be working at something for a long time. <laughs> um, I, 
And I, I want to point that out to people because sometimes they look at my work and they think it's amazing, but I'm like, to make that tiny little square, I had to work on that for like a solid hour. Um, so some, sometimes it takes, it's really quick, it's like five minutes. Other times it's like, you know, this, the work of being an artist, you know, some, it takes it takes time sometimes. Sometimes it's inspiration and you're going, you're moving like magic through a process and it's all done before you know it. And other times it's like, okay, there's no inspiration, but I'm going to keep going and going and going until it looks good. All right, I'm going to use this graphic instead because it's a little bit better for my example. It's taller. There we go. So then on the bottom, I'm going to add the texture from my mood board, which is a linen texture. So again, tying it all in with my brand. That way people will recognize it. So even while they're scrolling through Pinterest, if you're pinning your images and they all, look, they all have the same color scheme and feel, people will start to notice. They'll be like, wow, I keep seeing images from Emma or Michelle, and they, she's like really pumping out value, and she's really giving good content, and you will, they will start associating you with, as someone who is on top of what you're all about, and they'll go and check what you're all about. So you'll just be seen as an expert if your content is recognizable, where they just see it over and over and over and they know it's from you. Okay, so I'm putting my URL on the bottom here. Okay. So, the, I want to, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I want a little bit of a border between the green and the photo. So, coming over to this little tool here, you see where there's a diagonal line, that means it's transparent right now. This is, this color one represents the outline of the overlay, and right now it's transparent, there's no color. So I'm going to come down here and make it gray. And I need to send this back, so right clicking on it, send to back. So I'm gonna get rid of this red bar. Don't need it. There we go. Okay, so that is one way to put together a um, Pinterest graphic. And using a mood board has helped me go faster, keep it, keep it uh, within my brand, and have it look nice versus if I'm going completely from scratch, it's, it would be a lot harder to make my graphic look nice. Now, the other thing I want to do is show you how to make this a little bit different where the text is on top of the photo. So what we're going to do is take this green bar and get rid of the gray, put it in the middle, stretch it out a little bit, stretch out my photo a little bit, Take the headline, fit it into the square, make it a bit bigger, and we can play around with the text a little bit more to make it a little bit more compelling. So what I'm going to do is I will make this overlay transparent so that you can see what's going on in the back, and make the text a little bit darker. And I'm gonna come over to my overlays button, grab the circle, and kind of highlight the number 10. So I'm gonna come over here and make the circle have an outline and get rid of the middle. So color two is the middle of the overlay and I'm gonna make it transparent. So now we have this black outline and I'm gonna put it on top right there. And I'm gonna create a little bit more space. Come back up and 
get this space a little bit more thin. There we go. I'm just like in design mode now. Um, all right, and I want to play around with the square a little bit. I'm going to right click on it and then click on duplicate overlay. I'm going to make the middle transparent. I'm going to make the um, outline green. Stretch it out a little bit and put it over my square. So that just adds a little bit of like extra flair to it. And there you have it. So I can switch this out. Like right now I have a template. Um, so if I wanted to use a different photo and a different title, let me demonstrate that really quick. So I'm going to um, get rid of the background. And the cool thing about PicMonkey right now is you can add your templates or your graphics to the hub, which is a library of your own graphics within PicMonkey so that you can pull it out whenever you want. So what you would do is you would click Add to Hub and create the title, add it, and that way when you come back to PicMonkey, let me show you really quickly, PicMonkey.com. You would hover over this and then click on hub and that opens up that library and you can pull that graphic back out and what you would what we what you would get is exactly this. So now let's say, okay, I'm ready for another blog post. It's time to put up something else. And you're just, just you're just gonna use the same template and you would just use a different stock photo. So let me just go ahead and grab one. like uh, this one. So I would just switch out the background, send it back, and change the title, and be able to just pop that on Pinterest. So you can see how that literally, it took time to create the template, like I don't know how long it took, like 10 minutes. Um, and then to keep using it, it takes like 10 seconds. So taking the time to make the template where you are using your fonts, you are using your colors, you, the textures, um, and then saving it as a template so that the background is transparent and you can switch out the background. That way you can make the content creation part of your business go so much faster and work for you because if people don't recognize your graphics, if your graphics are always, if they always have a different look, uh, a different feel and if they don't match your brand when they go from the, your social media page to your website, then your graphics aren't going to work for you. They're going to work against you. So having a mood board to work from taking the time to have templates so that your images have the same look and feel, uh, those are things that are really important, not only for you as a business owner who doesn't have the time to spend all day creating graphics, but for your customers to have a, a good experience of your brand and your business. Okay, so we, um, we the, the other, t I, I wish I could show you and tell you everything I know, but I want to give you uh, a couple of tips to help you keep moving along. So, like I said, keep things simple. Uh, right now we are on the Female Entrepreneur Association website. Uh, Carrie is the lovely lady behind this and she's my client. And all the graphics that you're looking at right now from the graphics up here to the banner and the, this, the, um, the blog post featured graphics down here, all of these graphics I made on Pinterest. So <clears throat> one of the things that has really helped me uh, in, in creating this wealth of creativity in the back of my mind so that way so that when I would sit down to create a graphic I actually had something to work from because you know how sometimes you sit down and you're like I'm ready to be creative and then you're just like uh. <laughs> it's like you can't think of anything um, I would exercise that creative muscle by looking at other people's graphics and thinking, hmm, how do they do that? Okay, I see that they made a cute little outline and they have a background graphic and they, they use different overlays and just 
getting to know uh, the features of PicMonkey and looking at other people's graphics, I was able to see how I could replicate it. Um, and I want to point out how simple Carrie's graphics are before I move on. So same thing. Like, look at this graphic right now. How do you think we put this together? It's very, very simple. You can see how it is a tall image, so it's repurposed for Pinterest. And we use a stock photo. And on the bottom, we have the logo. And behind the logo, we have this half semi, we have the semicircle, this white semicircle, so the, the logo always stands out no matter what the stock photo is. Then we have this gray banner. And we have a couple of gold bars that we put on either end of the banner. And then on the top, we have this pink rectangle and we just switch out the title. We switch out the, the little additional mini title down there and we switch out the stock photos. So the template is this pink square on top and then the gray bar and then the logo, everything else Everything else we switch out. So what I showed you with how I created this are the same steps and tools and features that I use to create all of the graphics for the blog posts. And this is how we've been creating the graphics for the blog post for like years already. So very, very simple. Uh, I wanna close out with a couple of tips for resources because I've learned that having uh, additional resources for designing your graphics can make the process so much more fun and easy. So my go-to resource is creativemarket.com. And this is where I buy fonts, I buy patterns, I buy elements, and I just create a library of these, these things. And so like if you come over to creativemarket.com, hover over graphics, this is my favorite place to hang out. And I'll go to like patterns, click on patterns, and let's say you're designing social media quotes for Facebook. And all that means is you're using a square template. And you can find those templates in this, the template area of the PicMonkey site like I showed you. And a very simple way to do that in a, so that it looks nice and pretty. It's like you can, you can use 100% your own uh, colors, but sometimes it's fun to pop in a pattern and it's not gonna take away from your brand if you're still using your colors in other ways and you're using your fonts. So like, let's say we click on this pattern bundle here. So all these beautiful background patterns, you can use that in the, then the backdrop to your quote. And I'm gonna show you a, an example of that. Um, so if we come over to Carrie's Facebook page. I just made a couple of graphics for her Facebook page, the Female Entrepreneur Association Facebook page last night. And I use all the same tips that I just showed you, but for a Facebook graphic instead of a Pinterest graphic. And like, here it is, here's one. Um, it's already been uh, liked 1.2 thousand times. And it's so simple. <laughs> all it is, is I bought a background um, pattern from Creative Market a while ago. So the same thing, kind of thing that I'm showing you right here, it's a background pattern. I did not like design this background from scratch. So I use other people's expertise. Like there's graphic designers out there that are designing things. Feel free to, to support them and use their products in your own designs and just let that be just uh, an, an added beauty element to it. You don't need to do everything 100% from scratch yourself. I incorporate other, the works of other designers all the time into my own work. So this is a background pattern. And then you can see on top is this circle with a golden outline. So all that is is a golden circle that I put in the middle and then a white circle that I put on top of the golden circle so, that, so it looks like it has this cute little golden outline. 
And then using Carrie's font, I put in this quote. And then on the top, I just put on put a, a, a golden bar. And you can find that in Creative Market if you just if you just type in gold pattern, gold background. You'll find the resources that I'm I'm talking about that I use in this in this um, image. So and then on the bottom, I put the white semicircle and her logo. So that's what I mean when I say look at other people's graphics and kind of see like how would I, how would I have put that together if I made that and that starts building up the muscle of creativity uh, for you so that when you sit down to create your own works you can use the same types of um, it's not this you not you're not going to recreate it exactly but you can see that okay I can put a background pattern on really easily by downloading that from creativemarket.com and then on top of that I can put a white square or a, or a white circle or a white star, it doesn't even matter, to be able to have a backdrop for the quote and the quote is gonna be in my font and then I'll put my logo on the bottom. So that that's like the recipe for a graphic that looks amazing every time. And to do that, you would do, you would, you're using the same, uh, half dozen tips and tricks that I showed you in making a graphic for Pinterest. So basically that is like the bare bones of everything I, I use and know to create all the stuff I make all the time for my clients and for myself. And I really hope that it helps you just get in there and get on PicMonkey and make graphics that look beautiful, like from the beginning, not like two years from now, you'll be able to make beautiful graphics. Like you can do that right now. That's fantastic, Michelle. Wow, that's really great training. Thank you so much. Um, some great tips there for people. Just a couple of things I just like to remind people, just just taking a couple of notes there while you're speaking. And I suppose one of them is to have your logo, um, like you're saying, on the graphic. Um, that's super important so that if people do share it, that, you know, that if, if, if um, somebody shares something belongs to Michelle and I find it somewhere randomly that her brand is on it, her logo is on it, and I know where it originated from. Um, and it means if people want to contact you, they know like what website to go to. So I think that's super important. Would you agree, uh, Michelle? Yes. Uh, and on Pinterest, uh, your graphics are connected to your website when you upload them. But sometimes it can, like I said, if somebody steals your graphic and uses it for their own purposes, that can happen. So having your logo on there, having your URL on there can help prevent that from happening. And it's just a good, good uh, thing to do all the time for all your graphics anyway. It helps with people uh, recognizing it all that much more. Yeah, for sure. And also you were saying about um, templates and I really love that concept. It was the first time when you, when I was on your training there about two years ago, it was one of the first things that I really noticed where you're creating the templates. And as you said earlier, you're, you, like it does take a bit of work to do it, but once they're done, it makes it easier because each time you're, you're, you're using elements of the master template, if you will. And I think that's really a time saving device for people. So um, I hope people use, utilize that because I think one of the biggest issues with um, social media can be just the time trying to create all this content. So I think um, making a template like Michelle has just shown you is really, really a great idea um, for sure. Um, the other thing, like, you know, just remind people that Pinterest is the second, you know, biggest driver of traffic towards websites, um, you know, and not to forget it because I think some people have kind of... Um, parked it and not really using it maybe as much as they could and again depending on the industry you're in um, it can definitely be something to be looking at um, I like the idea of you know the people are there to be inspired they're trying to organize something they're trying to do something so if you're there you're there under the auspices of being able to help people um, it's not overrun by ads like Facebook and whatnot um, yet I should add um, however you know it, it, like there are you guys can access ads or can you in Guam um, Michelle ads for you know because Pinterest that you can do ads on Pinterest in the States I believe but we, we don't have access to it here in Ireland in the UK um, but do you guys like are you seeing ads yet on Pinterest or yes I can I can invest in promoted pins which is okay like for Pinterest and 
even then it, it won't feel like an ad. It would okay. just be, it would just be more promoted on Pinterest as the graphic that it's are, it already is, but it won't be, it won't look like an ad the way you know that there are ads on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, which means that people aren't being bombarded. So they're not in that space. They're, like they're more in a space of buying because they don't feel bombarded by these ads everywhere. Um, and just to point out as well, and I can't remember the exact um, you know, statistic, but I, I've, several times I've seen research whereby if people buy from Pinterest, their average spend, it's not quite double, but it's significantly more than buying from Facebook. So I think that's an important one to remember because people are in that fabulous mode oh wow that looks amazing and you know so they're more willing to part with their money I think um you know as they're organizing I don't know have you found that Michelle or in your experience yes most of my traffic not only comes from Pinterest but that is where most of my sales come from because people that come from Pinterest are in a buying mentality they're ready to spend money versus if you go to Facebook you're not thinking of Ooh, I want to improve my life. What products can I look for? And you know, what things can I can I explore to improve X Y Z? You're like on there just to hang out, like other people's statuses, and just scroll through. So you're more distracted. You're not on a improve my life mindset mode the way people are on Pinterest. And the, with that mindset, you are more likely to spend your money. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I mean, I know when I'm there, I'm like a gog and I can lose hours <laughs> easily. Um, and also, is there anything else you'd like to just recommend people off the top of your head before we wrap up? Anything because you've mentioned creative market. I think that's a wonderful resource to go to. Um, is there any um, even websites for stock photographs that you would recommend or anything like that? Okay. And I'm getting really dark here because it's evening, <laughs> but <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can still hear me and see my screen. Okay. Um, the other website I use a lot is called unsplash.com, and you can come here for free photography. And I use this a lot in the photos for my clients, including Carrie. So very, very awesome resource. And if you have a specific, you know, you can scroll through and see all of the latest editions of photos but if you have a specific thing that you area that you want to look for you can come up here and type it in the search bar like if you type in woman you'll see all of the photos relating to women and that can help you narrow it down the other website that i have purchased a lot from but still saves a lot of money is designcuts.com and in the beginning they were uh, they created bundles of fonts. So fonts can get really expensive. Like I've spent as much as $50 for a font. But they bundled the fonts together where you can buy a whole ton of fonts at a 99% discount. And now I see that they've expanded their bundles to include things like illustrations and backgrounds and graphics. So it, it's, it's always fun to come on here and check out what they have in the latest bundle and to build up your library of resources because if you can have a library where you can just go in there, pull out a background, pull out a, an illustration, it just brings your graphic up to a whole other level really quickly and easily versus you trying to be the one to come up with every element yourself from scratch. You know, my graphics, the reason why a lot of them turn out really lovely is because I take advantage of resources like this where I can use features and elements and and just cool patterns and textures that other artists have created and I just incorporate it into my own work. So those three websites are the ones I really just use the most. I don't have a million different places I go to for resources. It's basic, I like to keep things simple. I like things to be quick and I like things to look really good uh, as quickly as possible. So that's it. Uh, sounds great and thank you. They're, they're amazing resources to have. Um, but also I'd just like to ask you as well, Michelle, just if people want to get in contact with you, if they want to work further with you, I think you have a course, is that right? Or, you know, how do people, you know, because I'm sure people are sitting there going, oh my gosh, I want to learn more. <laughs> so how, ca how can they do that? Well, the easiest way to um work with me is through the course I just made, the graphic 
design course, but it's kind of like in um, stealth mode because I'm still making it, I'm still tweaking it and making it perfect. At the moment, you can access the course at a low cost. Uh, it's $27 at the moment. When I'm done updating it and everything, it's going to be $97 or more. And the easiest way to access that is to just email me directly and let me know that you want the link because I'm not really promoting it everywhere right now. I'm just sharing it with specific people and specific audiences. So if you are interested in taking my graphic design course and getting all the updates that come along at a low cost of only $27, it, you can email me at my name, Michelle Rohr at gmail.com and you spell it M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-R-O-H-R at gmail.com. Fantastic. That's great. And what I'll do is actually, if you can even share the link with me or whatever, I'm, I'm happy to send it out on the email to people or in the group. Um, there's a group there as well. So, cause I, 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 I suspect people would like to actually have this. So, um, if you're okay that with that, Michelle, that might, I think, um, it would be great I'm for people to sit with that. Good. Yes. Fantastic. Well, Michelle, um, you've, you know, thank you so much. I know it's getting late there. It's actually just morning time here. <laughs> um, it's funny with the time zones. Um, but yeah, I, thank you so much. You've done an absolutely stirring job. I was really excited for you to come and present because, you know, as I said, I, I've been on some of your trainings and I, I love the way you simplify it for people and that you break down the elements. So, you know, when I look at a graphic now, I find I'm actually dissecting it where I'm like, oh, they do that. They, they do that whereas when I first looked at them it was like dear god how did they do that you know and I'd love to do it but I, you know there's this you feel like you have to have this constant graphic designer working in your business um, and I think Michelle's training just shows you that any of you guys out there and I know many of you are creative so there's no reason why you can't go and do it yourself and at a very low cost I mean pick monkey did you say it's five dollars a month um, and there's a free version as well so I mean it's very very inexpensive very inexpensive so yeah, yeah. so Michelle, thank you so much for your time. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. And um, I know from everybody else that, that they'll, they'll really enjoy this presentation as well. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on. I hope everyone got a lot of value. I'm absolutely sure they have. <laughs>